I know I've said this like a million times before, but growing up, I was a huge Disney Channel kid. And by that, I mean I was a really chubby kid who watched a lot of Disney Channel. But somehow I never heard about Disney XD until this year. I mean, it started in 2009, so I guess it was kind of after my time. But anyway, Disney XD was made to be popular with boys because at some point Disney Channel became made for tween girls specifically, which apparently I did not get the memo on this because 17 year old me was just right there front and center being like, oh man, I sure hope Maddie Fitzpatrick can finally go on that date and her hair doesn't get too frizzy in the humidity. What will she do? So like I said, Disney XD was marketed towards boys, so everything is kind of like what they thought a young boy fantasy would be, you know, like superheroes or martial arts or superhero martial art doctors. And Disney Channel proper was relegated to young girl fantasies, like what if your best friend didn't stab you in the back, or what if you met a boy who was actually kind of normal? Can you imagine? Now with that in mind, I wanted to check out the 2011 Disney XD sitcom Kicking It, which is about karate. Karate comes from Japan, and speaking of Japan, this video is brought to you by Boksu. Boksu delivers the experience of tasting authentic Japanese snacks right to your door. They work with family businesses all over Japan to deliver a new theme of authentic treats every month. The first box that you're going to get is called Seasons of Japan. It's curated to bring you the taste of Japan's four seasons and like a little bit of everything you can expect to get in a regular themed box. This month's theme is Hokkaido Wonderland. Now Hokkaido is the northernmost prefecture in Japan. They're really well known for other dairy products like anything that's milk or cream or cheese related. Now what I think is the coolest part of this besides the fact that you get a bunch of snacks that taste amazing by the way. I mean like I lived in Japan for 12 years okay I'll tell you right now Japanese snacks are just in their own category like it's not even close. But anyway, besides that, each box comes with this little cultural booklet, and the booklet tells you where each snack comes from in Japan, who makes them, the flavor profile. You get so much more than just the food itself, okay? It's really more of an experience. And like I said, these snack makers are over 100 years old, so you know you're getting some real authentic stuff in here. So, Kelsey, what was your favorite snack in the box? My favorite was the white sesame dango mochi. It was like nutty from the sesame seeds and chewy, and it was, oh, I love mochi. It's so good. Yeah, I love the okaki senbei right here. I mean, it's just like this explosion of umami flavor. They're like, honestly, it's probably one of the best things I've ever had in my life. Boxu is also the perfect gift for foodies and travel lovers and anyone in your life who, who likes delicious things, which is everyone, I assume. So use my code Alex Myers to get $15 off your first Boxu order and give someone or yourself the gift of amazing, authentic Japanese snacks. Okay, back to the show. How you doing? It's my first day. What would you recommend? Not this stuff. I don't know what half of it is. <laughs> Just do like hacky sex this apple as if the girl's gonna be like, well shoot, I was just gonna ignore you until you showed off your sick hacky sex skills. Now I'm just hoping you'll sit me down and explain all the intricacies of cryptocurrency. All right, that was almost cool. I'm Kim. I'm Jack, I'm new. Um, can I have my apple back? Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, maybe I'll see you around, Kim. Maybe you will. And then at the very end of the show, we flash back to this scene when he realizes that there hasn't been a girl named Kim at this school for 500 years. Anyway, so this is our main character, Jack. Now, Jack is the new kid in school, so this table of guys welcomes him to the school and lets him hang out with him, which like, yeah, sure, everybody wants to hang out with the new guy you don't even know, but they're always too busy to hang out with me, the guy you've been going to school with for like 10 years straight? Come on, let me into Allison's party. I have a Sega Saturn. Hey, new kid. Uh, what are you doing, Eddie? We saved that seat for cheerleaders, prom queens, and supermodels. So how do you guys all know each other? We're friends. We do karate together after school. We don't just do karate, Milton. In fact, I've already gotten a few calls about joining the Navy SEALs. Why does this guy sound like a young, moist critical? Oh, hey guys, just wanted to talk about the new uh, colon cleansing rectum quivering news that just came out. But anyway, so you may be shocked to hear this, okay? But these guys here aren't exactly the cool kids, which probably should have been obvious from the fact that this dude's wearing a cardigan while everyone else has short sleeves on. <laughs> That's awesome. A kid from the Black Dragon Dojo just wailed you. Like, Not cool, man. Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 hold on a second. So the cool jock bully kids also do karate? The heck kind of school is this? Anyway, so Jack being the new kid and having nothing to lose anyway, decides he's gonna leave his mark on the school and go tell the mean karate boys what's what. <laughs> Aren't you gonna do anything? Wait, I thought you guys knew karate. Yes, we do. They know it better. I got this. Why did we learn his name? Now I'm gonna miss him. Hey, I like your outfits. You guys, uh, cheerleaders? You got a problem or something? I didn't come over here to fight, man. Oh, okay. 
Oh, it's going to be one of these shows. Uh, I probably should have seen this coming. So then Jack proceeds to beat the crap out of these guys just right here in the cafeteria, and everyone's like, wow, he's so cool, he does karate. But you know, back in high school, I tried showing off my taekwondo once, and everyone was just like, all right, who invited the weird Naruto Sailor Moon kid? And also, Kim's just like completely unfazed by this, you know? She's like, huh. Isn't that something? And like, not a single teacher or safety officer for miles around, apparently. Like, in my high school, the PE slash economics teacher who could barely form a coherent sentence because, like, that's the kind of school I went to. But, like, that dude would tackle you in the hallway if you just, like, took out your cell phone. The heck kind of Lord of the Flies school is this? Anyway, so skipping ahead a little bit here, in this town, there's a dojo called Bobby Wasabi. Hi, I'm Sensei Rudy, and I run the Bobby Wasabi Martial Arts Academy. <laughs> Come on down to the Bobby Wasabi Martial Arts Academy today! Now, you see, that's how you know it's real, authentic Japanese karate. Because, you know, if there's, like, a Japanese word in there, like, it's gotta be real, you know? I mean, it's just like uh, Mr. Sato's Chimpoko Hibachi. But there is one little problem with this dojo. None of your students are advancing. If you don't win two belts at the next tournament, we're closing you down. Uh-oh, I know where this is going. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> Guys, what are you doing? They said if we don't win two belts at our next tournament, they're shutting us down. All right, guys, looks like we gotta beat him in a go-kart tournament and or breakdance competition to save the dojo. Now, right that moment, Jack is being chased around the mall by Paul Blart because he's skateboarding and there's nothing worse than skateboarding youths, okay? Next thing you know, they're gonna be dancing to rock and roll music and exposing their shoulders. <laughs> Okay, I know we're all falling at hard times here, but like, why is this shopping mall made out of paper? I get the feeling they might not have actually filmed this at a real karate dojo. Anyway, so because Jack destroyed a place of business with a skateboard, see, that's how it always starts, what I tell ya? He might end up going to juvie. You're in big trouble, Jack. But if you join my dojo and help me win two belts, I'll tear up this report and you won't have to go to juvie. Juvie? That's jail for kids, fella. <laughs> I would join your dojo. But I'm not a karate guy. I'm a skater. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure those are mutually exclusive, my dude. <laughs> Sorry, old man, who's probably like 28. I don't have time for karate. I'm a skater, which means I spend all my time trying to do like one kickflip while also hanging out with girls who only wear black hoodies and cut those weird thumb holes in their sleeves for some reason. But this is the part where we finally get to know about Jack's anime backstory and like why he has magic ninja powers and a mullet. You took out four black dragons all by yourself and did a perfect flying sidekick through my wall. <laughs> okay, truth is, my grandfather was a karate sensei. He even trained Bobby Wasabi for all of his movies. Your grandfather trained Bobby Wasabi? And as a young boy, I would always watch my grandfather practice karate and copy everything he did. But one day, my grandpa died in a tragic gender reveal accident, and now his soul is stuck in this necklace, which gives me magic karate powers. But then later on, I'm going to learn that the real karate was actually confidence or friendship or something. Anyway, this recipe requires two double boilers and 14... But anyway, so he agrees to join the Bobby Wasabi dojo and help them not get closed down. But right after this, he's hanging out with Kim one day, and this is where the plot gets real thick real fast, you know, like me, with Thanksgiving and Christmas being back to back? Like, whose idea was this? Looks like you know something about karate. A little bit. So what are you doing at Bobby Wasabi? You should be training at the best dojo in town. What do you know about karate? Hey! <laughs> I guess you do know a little something about karate. <laughs> this place made me a black belt. Everything at the Black Dragon is best of the best. Yeah, so it turns out Kim is actually one of the bad guys, and they want the Bobby Wasabi Dojo to close down for some reason, even though, like, they only have five members and they're all really bad at karate, and the Black Dragon Dojo has, like, 50 people in it, so why do they care? So, what do you say, Jack? Will you join the Black Dragons? I'd like to, but I can't. Here you go. You keep it. Let it be a reminder that you're always welcome here. Wow, thanks. But that was my bow staff. My mom gave it to me. And I gave it to her. That's right, you heard me. I'm seeing her. <laughs> what the heck is happening in this show? Here, kid, take this bow staff. It's yours. But that's my bow staff. I'm sleeping with your mom. Now, because, oddly enough, he does not want to go to juvie, and, of course, to avenge the memory of his long-lost grandfather. What? I'm fine. I've just been down to the strip club. Jack decides to stay with the Bobby Wasabi Dojo and help them win the tournament. <laughs> That was unbelievable, Jack. These guys are your friends. They didn't break the wasabi code. I did. I broke it too. 
You don't walk away from your friends when they need you. Unless, of course, they're the kind of friends who always need you because they can't quite seem to figure their lives out for themselves. But anyway, so they all train for a while and then we get the big tournament where it looks like the Wasabi Dojo is going to win. And so the Black Dragons have to pull out the cheap tricks. You know what you have to do. <laughs> Rudy, I can't get up. You gotta get up! You gotta get up, Sam! Rudy, I can't get up because you're kneeling on my leg! Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> I thought it was cause the thing, but actually it was cause the other thing. But of course, in the end, the Bobby Wasabi Dojo ends up winning two belts, whatever that means. And so they don't have to close down and the day is saved. And the real kicker here, okay, is that after this, you'll never guess who also wants to join up. <laughs> Kim, what are you doing here? I quit the Black Dragon. You guys were all right in the tournament. The way I see it, you need all the help you can get. What do you think, guys? She's in. Got my vote, A+. Plus. A girl? <laughs> Cooties, grouse. And so the show kind of goes on like this. I mean, it's pretty much just like every other Disney sitcom. It's just with like a karate twist. Just think like Hannah Montana, but with karate instead of music concerts. But at the very end of the show, okay, 2015, Kim has gone to Japan to study karate, and she comes back with her new sensei dude who has some very interesting news. Ah. You must be Sensei Rudy. I've come because two of the finest students I have ever seen have trained at this dojo. Thank you. We do what we can. I was talking about Kim and Jack. We are considering offering you a position as Grand Master at the Otai Academy. Yeah, so even though karate has been a thing in Japan for over 100 years now, we really want some American dude from a Midwestern strip mall to come and show us how it's done. Also, just a quick aside here, but like, puberty was very kind to, to everyone on this show. So if nothing else, the show is a great reminder that like, if you're a teenager and you think you're kind of ugly and awkward or whatever, just wait a while. I mean, I didn't even look semi-decent until my mid-20s, so. Good luck. But of course, ultimately, Rudy decides to stay where he is because, you know, friendship or something or whatever. Rudy, what are you doing here? I decided to stay. Why? Well, because you guys showed me that here, I can make a difference. And that is the Disney XD sitcom, Kicking It. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. Leave a like, leave a comment, all that stuff. Send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com and let me know what movies or TV shows you think I should check out next. And above all, let's everybody have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.